Shalom. First of all, I'd like to start by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And salutations to the Archim out there teaching the truth, man. The title of this video I'm going to do is going to be called Ordinances of the Heathen. The title of this video is derived from the book of Maccabees, the first, first Maccabees 1 and 13. The whole chapter is good, but I'm going to read the 13th verse. It says, Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. This time period is what's popularly known as the Hellenistic period, or shall I say historically known as the Hellenistic period. The definition of a Hellene is a Greek-speaking Jew. That's why you had something called a diaspora, which is Greek for scattering, because the Israelites went into captivity under every nation, namely, case in point, the Greeks. They became Hellenized. So from here I'd like to look at the word, the definition of the word ordinances. Now the definition of the word ordinances is authoritative direction and the word ordinances comes from the word ordain which the definition of the word ordain means to put in order and that's exactly what happened here in this scripture there was an authoritative order put out by the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen heathens being these other nations the greeks at the time in which their customs was strange or alien to the Jews. The authorities of the time preferred that the Jews would hold fast to their customs, their holidays, their calendars and so forth, even their beliefs, because it alleviated the fear of rebellion and more economically beneficial. During the Hellenistic period there was a lot of things that Jake stopped doing. They stopped getting circumcised, they stopped growing beards, they didn't want to observe the Sabbath and the new moon anymore. Leaving their worship and traditions, they began to set up gymnasiums and perform athletics. And the definition of the word gym comes from the word gymnos, which means naked. In which they would perform physical activities completely naked in the nude. They began practicing homosexuality, orgies and other ritual practices which is no different from them hip hop uh, rappers and all these different singers or artists that go into the music industry today. They're groomed into being homosexuals in order to make a paycheck. So when you read verse 11 in the same chapter, it tells you, it says, In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen, which is no different from a music contract or whatever contract they make in today's world. It says that around about us, for since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So they'll do anything to make the buck in today's age and nothing different from back then. Scripture says nothing is new under the sun. Another thing they began to do was practice idolatry in which the Greeks are world renowned for the different gods that they worshipped. And back then they had, you know, Jews secretly worshipping Zeus and these other deities. And they were honouring their deities as well. Having what you would call a solemn libation, which solemn means serious and a libation means to pour. So they were pouring out wine or pouring out whatever they needed to do in order to, um, to honour these deities. Just as a quick precept, I wanted to read Isaiah 30 and the first verse on down. It says, Woe to the rebellious children, talking about the Jews, saith the Lord, that take counsel but not of me 
and that cover with a covering but not of my spirit and that's what them Jews in Greece did at that time they took counsel to set up or construct these different practices that they may add sin to sin that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh which Pharaoh just means king and to trust in the shadow of Egypt the new Egypt is America otherwise known as Babylon the Great a lot of guys trust in America Jake trusts in its economy Jake trusts in their investments the dollar and the joke of it is is what does the average Jake own practically nothing Jake trusts in its merchandise leadership when Obama came on the scene a lot of those Judites were pacified. They trust in their military capabilities, Esau's army. People really don't believe that this so-called white man can go down. But they're in for a shock as the elite bankers, as we speak, are staging a controlled demolition of the world economy starting with the world reserve currency which is the dollar you got hyperinflation so-called quantitative easing a debt perpetuating system that's bound to implode but the main reason why America is gonna go down is because of the prophecies of our Heavenly Father Yahweh Hashem Shai. after the cause and effect of using a fiat currency the whole world is going to be introduced into using a radio frequency identification device which is spoken of in Revelations the 13th chapter and the 16th verse which is the mark of the beast an implantable device introducing the world to a completely cash free society in which they're going to use their military to enforce it that's why it's unwise to trust in the shadow of Egypt Revelation 17 and 5 the scriptures tell you that America being Babylon is a mystery it says mystery Babylon the great the mother of all harlots and abominations of the earth that's because America is the worst of all kingdoms and when you look at the beginning of the Edomites rule on a world scale which was the Greeks it tells you in 1st Maccabees the first chapter and the ninth verse it says evils were multiplied in the earth showing you these Edomites and their rulership is an abomination to the Lord man these Edomites are a vile people or well, the so called gods the idols the customs and practices of the Egyptians and the Babylonians they were later translated into the customs and worship or practices of the Greeks they would then later just change the names of their gods but I don't want to go too in depth regarding that subject matter as I've previously covered that in previous videos you can check out GMS Shamayam UK or you can check GMS Past Revisited verse 3 it says therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion and Jake is living in a confused state right now not knowing who they are and not knowing who their true power is so our people are pending judgment so this scripture shows you or clarifies that the Jews were doing the same thing going all the way back to the Assyrian Empire and um, consequentially leading them into the captivity of the Babylonian Empire and just to quantify that point I'm gonna read a bit of history surrounding the time of Isaiah now this is from then again dot info uh, the prophet Isaiah circa 740 to 681 BC it says second paragraph having already been split into two independent provinces Samaria and Judah 
Since 922 BC, the Israelites faced Assyrian conquest in 722 BC. Although Judah, Judea centered on Jerusalem, survived while Samaria fell, the Semitic Chaldeans swept through in 586 BC, carrying off the Judean upper classes into subjection, later called the Babylonian captivity. And those were the so-called Kushites that were ruling at that in through that Babylonian Empire. Once again showing you the diaspora or the scattering of the Israelites throughout these different uh, rulerships throughout history and to today. But anyway, going back to the point regarding the libation, the Jews put off the holy convocations, which are the feasts of the Lord, spoken of in Leviticus the 23rd chapter the Passover the feast of first fruits as it says in verse 13 and a meat offering thereof shall be two tenth deals of fine flour mingled with oil an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savour and the drink offering thereof shall be of wine the fourth part of a hin and that drink offering would have been a solemn libation in honor of our Heavenly Father Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. So, going back to First Maccabees, the first chapter in the 15th verse, it says, And they made themselves uncircumcised, and forsook the Holy Covenant, and joined themselves to the heathen, and were sold to do mischief. And part of that mischief is what I'm about to read. All you have to do is look at the history, man, just to see examples. So you got, you know, Jeremiah 7 and 18, it says, The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven, to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. And that's exactly what they did, man. They was making up, cooking up all kinds of meals and shit. Same thing they do today. Uh... You know, you got Jeremiah 44 and 18. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. So they started trusting or reverting back into their old bad ways. And that's the same thing they do today regarding university. They worship the Queen of Heaven for the wisdom and the knowledge that they um that they have or qualify to get them um titles that's why you got the so-called negro um woman or the so-called negro man always on to you about getting them qualifications because like like the scripture said man you'll be wanton you you're gonna be hungry you ain't gonna have enough money to take care of yourself but that queen of heaven can make it happen for you. So they was going off. And that's testament to what the scriptures say when it says the wisdom of this world is foolishness with, with Yahweh. Alright? Because there ain't nothing but, nothing but confusion. You go get one of these big corporate jobs, but all you're doing is furthering the captivity of your people and aiding the upliftment of this wicked kingdom. When Yahweh Shai said, think not that I come to bring peace on the earth, but a sword, man. So the Lord's coming to destroy this place. But the religion of Christianity would teach you or have you think otherwise. So contrary to you so-called West Indians, Hispanics, Native Americans and so forth, you 12 tribes, this world wasn't established for your benefit and advance. It was set up to destroy you. So from here, I'd like to go to another um, another article. This is njop.org. The article is called Judaism versus Hellenism. I'm going to read the small uh, paragraph where it says beauty as ideal. It says, Greek culture placed the highest value on the physical and gave the world the idea that beauty 
is in itself a supreme ideal. That's why we now have today an excessive amount of supplementation, an excessive consumption of body enhancement drugs, male and female cosmetic surgeries, which all go back to the Greek culture in which they used Jake during the Hellenistic period to promote physique. You know, Jake's always had a better body, stronger, faster, you know. And they show you that in the movie Get Out, that the so-called white man desires the body of a Jake, desperately. You've got these different wrestling groups out there, these federations that are set up to display one's physique and agility. That industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. However, all the athletes that participate end up dying, majority of them end up dying young because all of the um, body enhancement drugs that they have to take to keep up and keep competitive. Where's the wisdom in that? Epitomizing this worship of the physical was the Greek passion for athletics. Among their first actions, the Greeks built gymnasiums in every city they conquered. The Greek athletics were held in the nude, highlighting the beauty of the human being. The physical glorification is one example of the Hellenistic view of, the na of nature as supreme. That's why the fashion of today is set up to mirror that of the Greeks, which was what? Nudity. Leggings where you can see the woman's vagina, low-cut jeans, low-cut cleavage tops, men wearing skirts and dresses completely out of order. The article goes on to say the attitude that the greatness of the human being ruled over the belief in the power of their gods. So the Edomites, the Greeks in particular, used physical enhancement as a snare against the worship of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. So Jakes didn't believe in Yahweh no more. They wanted to believe in themselves and how great they are, having men in admiration, carnal and proud. So continuing on, on the second paragraph down from the... Um, title it says ironically greek culture and judaism are the roots of modern western civilization a fuse between the two so basically that's what you got a lot of jakes calling themselves israelites doing today they'll have a t-shirt with the fringes the 80s leather clothing all dressed in black and when you look into it and check it out that was a homosexual attire once again propagated by the Jakes, musicians and whatnot. Today you've got hip hop with Hebrew rap. Guys calling themselves Hebrew Israelites and going to collect awards at the BET, which is a so called network for black entertainment television. Guys shaping up their beards, all of which is contrary to the true worship of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. So continuing on, now let's look at the general ordinances of today. You've got Jakes who go to church on Sunday, every Sunday you have to go to church. But during the week you can be a Greek, so to speak. What else you got? Clubbing on the weekend and bank holidays based upon the calendar instead of keeping holy festivities. Worshipping a white Jesus tight skinny jeans and women's apparel, skirts etc, pork Easter and Christmas pork, lingerie parties which a lot of you Benjamites are into, you'll have a get together and um, all the women will be dressed up like straight up hookers like they're prepared for sex and that will be their, their, their outward clothing, they'll have them pasta dances and if it was someone's birthday, they would pour loads of champagne bottles over a birthday man or woman in a, you know, ritualistically. 
So Jake's out of his goddamn mind, man. But anyway, you know, summarising up now, just want to read uh, the Hellenistic period in the Wikipedia. It's like the third paragraph down. It says, The Hellenistic period was characterised by a new wave of Greek colonisation, which established Greek cities and kingdoms in Asia and Africa. This resulted in an export of Greek culture and language to these realms spanning as far as modern day Pakistan so that shows you how great the scattering of Israelites were man you got Jakes in Asia Pakistan all over the world so Alexander he conquered city states which made up his empire and in them city states he set up Greek style cities in which you can look at you know Greek architecture yourself paintings and sculptings things of that sort he set up administrative centers run by Greeks and after doing so Greek became the administrative language throughout his empire so as a consequence Jakes were further and further from the Hebrew language in Acts the 21st chapter and the 37th verse on down the Apostle Paul was mistaken to be an Egyptian which proves that he was a so-called Negro but the point is he was asked if he could speak Greek in which he could as he was a Roman citizen an Israelite who made Greek his tongue the very definition of a Hellene so recapping this video I've given examples of a fusion between Israelite culture and Greek or Western culture I've explained how the Israelites became Gentiles during the Hellenistic period I've shown you comparisons between the things that the ordinances of today and the ordinances of Greece and ultimately why we need deliverance and that this place needs to be destroyed and that the establishment and rule of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, which is the kingdom of heaven, the rulership of Israelites on earth, needs to be fulfilled and flourishing. So to bring it to date, that's why you're seeing a lot of these prophecies being fulfilled, such as the RFID, Mark of the Beast technology, agenda coming closer and closer to being mandatory on a world scale. World War Three between Russia and their allies and NATO and their allies the EU like Apostle Taha said in a recent video to understand prophecy is to understand the history so I hope by going into the history you have a better understanding as to why the judgments and the prophecies of our Heavenly Father must needs come to pass for the deliverance and the salvation of Israel so this was an instalment called the ordinances of the heathen i pray you were edified until the next video i'm gonna say shalom